Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on amplifier. For this video, I'm going to do a detailed explanation how a class B, okay, which is also known as push-pull amplifier, actually works. This will be the part five series discussion on amplifier. Earlier on, I have discussed on class A amplifier. So again, if you're keen to know on class A or class B amplifier, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on amplifier. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, once again, thank you so much for your strong support. Let's understand how a Class B push-pull amplifier actually works. Okay, the circuit above show a Class B, which is also known as push-pull amplifier circuit that use a balanced center tap input transformer. Okay, so therefore this part here is actually the balanced center tap input transformer. What they do is they actually split the incoming waveform into two equal half and which are 180 degree out of phase with each other. Okay, over here, you can see that this is the input signal. So after they went through this balance center tap input transformer, you can see that they generate two different types of signal. The magnitude will be the same, but they are 180 degree out of phase with each other. Okay, so basically this will be on the input. Let's move on to the output here. Okay, on the other side here, you can see that we have another center tap transformer on the output. Okay, the key purpose is to use to recombine the two signal that provide the increased power to the load. Okay, over here you can see that basically this will be one current, this will be another current. What they do is basically they combine them, okay, so as to achieve increased power to the load. I will come to the explanation later on. The transistor used for this type of push-pull amplifier circuit are both MPM transistor okay, with their emitter terminal connected together. Okay, so these two transistors, they are NPM type. And you can see from here, the emitter are connected to each other. Okay, again, I'll come to the explanation soon. The load current is shared between the two power transistor device. Okay, over here you can see that, okay, for example, TR1 and TR2, they actually share the current. Okay, you can see that this green basically pass through TR1 and then basically return back to the ground. And another way you can see that this is basically passing through the TR2 and finally they go back to the ground. So from here you can see that both TR1 and TR2, they actually share the load current. When there is no signal at the input, okay, imagine okay, when there is no signal at the input, both TR1 and TR2 will be off. Okay, it makes sense, right? Because if you still remember, they are both NPM type of transistor. Okay, what happened here is basically when there is nothing okay, at the base is zero, hence the two transistor TR1 and TR2 will be off. And hence when they are actually off, there won't be any collector current flowing through it. As I explained earlier on, they need to be on, then the collector current will be able to flow through. If both of them are off, the collector current will not be able to flow through. Let's take a look on one scenario, okay, which is the positive half cycle of the input signal. Okay, during the positive half cycle of the input signal, TR1 is on while TR2 is off. Let me explain this. Okay, earlier on, I have explained that these two waveform they will be 180 degree out of phase. So if this is the positive half cycle, you can see that this will be the positive half cycle here. 
this positive hype cycle will turn on TR1, okay, because this is a MPN transistor. While this is a negative half cycle, it will not be able to turn on TR2. Again, this is also a MPM type of transistor. And hence, therefore, during the positive half cycle, TR1 will be on, while TR2 will be off, as explained over here. Hence, the collector current will only flow through TR1, but not to TR2. Okay, because this guy is on, Therefore, the collector current will flow through TR1. Next, during the negative half cycle of the input signal, okay, so during the negative half cycle, okay, which I have not drawn here, you can see that this is a negative half cycle. This is another negative half cycle. This time round, the negative half cycle at the input, okay, they basically is mimicked by this positive half cycle over here. This will allow TR2 to be on. While now this is negative, you can see that TR1 will be off. So therefore, during the negative half cycle of the input signal, TR2 is on while TR1 is off. Hence, the collector current will only flow through TR2, but not to TR1. Okay, so I hope to keep this in mind. I'm going to do a further discussion. If TR1 base goes positive, okay, it drive the transistor into conduction and its collector current will increase. Okay, so which means that for example, this base here of TR1 basically is positive. Okay, they basically drive the transistor into conduction, which means that they are actually on and hence the collector current will increase. However, at the same time, the base current of TR2 will go negative. Okay, because this part will be negative and hence because of the negative, the base current of TR2 will go negative and hence they will go into cutoff, which I have explained. And the collector current of this transistor, again, they will be decreased by an equal amount and vice versa. Hence, positive half are amplified by one transistor and negative half by the other transistor, giving this push-pull effect. Let me explain again. Okay, so basically you can see that this is basically a waveform that generate over here. This is another waveform that generate at the negative half cycle. This is a waveform that is generated by the positive half cycle. And again, they go through this balance input transformer and basically they combine these two signal here. Okay, so remember the first one, they will be in phase. The second one, they will be 180 degree out of phase and therefore the outcome that deliver to the load will be looking like this. Okay, so this is a detailed explanation on class B amplifier. Let me give you another example of class B push-pull amplifier okay, without the transformer. Okay, so that will be much more easier to understand. Okay, so this will be another example of a push-pull amplifier. Basically, they use these two complementary or matching transistor one will be NPM type and the other one will be PNP types here. So basically what they do is basically they do it in a way that each transistor only conduct during one half cycle of the input waveform. Okay, let me explain again. Okay, so this is NPM, this is PMP. So during the positive half cycle, okay, this transistor will be turned on because they are NPM transistor. This PMP okay, will only turn on when it's a negative half cycle. Okay, so during the negative half cycle, this PMP will turn on while MPM will turn off. Okay, so over here, you can see that this part will be the positive half cycle. This part will be the negative half cycle. They combine together. And this is how does a class B push-pull amplifier actually work. Let me do some explanation. MPM type and PMP types transistor, they actually receive the same input signal together that is equal in magnitude, okay, but in opposite phase to each other. Okay, this result in one transistor only amplified one half or 180 degree of the input waveform cycle, while the other transistor amplified the other half or remaining 180 degrees of the input waveform cycle 
with the resulting two half being put together again at the output terminal. Okay, I guess I have explained this in my words, which is much more easier to understand. But over here, you will have a better idea how a class B push-pull amplifier works. Then the conduction angle for this type of amplifier circuit is only 180 degree or 50% of the input signal. This pushing and pulling effect of the alternating half cycle by the transistor gives this type of circuit its amusing push-pull name, but are more generally known as a class B amplifier. Okay, so by now you should know what is called push-pull. Basically, you can see that basically this part here will be the push, and then this part here will be the pull. Okay, let me elaborate again. So basically, on a positive hard cycle, this part turn on, so this will be the push here. So at the negative half cycle, this part is on. You can see that this will be the pull. So therefore, this is how the name of push pull amplifier. Okay, with this, I like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for a strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.